Summer Pockets is the latest addition to the key library produced by Jun Maeda, known writer of visual novels, clan ad, little busters, and angel beats, and their respective anime adaptations. There's a lot of fun and entertaining slice of life moments in this summer vacation visual novel, but as always with key works, it's a visual novel that will hit you hard with its touching, tear-jerking stories. Let's dive in to see what this visual novel has in store for us. Welcome to the August Hail, and today we're going to be taking a look at Summer Pockets. We join our main protagonist, Takahara Hairi, as he goes to an isolated, rural, and peaceful island for a summer vacation. He uses the recent death of his grandmother to visit the island to take care of her possessions. Once he arrives, he comes to know and befriends the local islanders, which includes four girls. Shiraha, a well-composed but distant, lonely individual. Ao, a friendly girl that can be found sleeping in various places on the island. Kaname, an adventurous girl looking for a pirate ship. And Sumugi, a girl who frequents the island's lighthouse searching for herself. One of the great things about Summer Pockets' common route is that it offers some replayability through some of the choices that you can make in the game. Most of them, if not all of them, have no long-term effects on the story, but they are just there for fun. I don't know how many times I had to pick between the normal answer I would actually pick or the chaotic evil answer just to see what would happen. While key works have a big emphasis on the big romance plot of each of the routes, the best strength of key works is the slice of life portions between the cast just hanging out being idiots. Speaking of idiots, I enjoy the interactions between the boys way too much. I just debated abandoning the girls just to go off on adventures with the bros just making great summer memories that ultimately ended up with us getting shot by Miki. Speaking of the boys, you can opt to go play table tennis with Tenzin in his little minigames. There are achievements that you can unlock by beating certain records or accomplishing objectives, either in minigames or the side store unlocks. These don't have any in-game collectibles from unlocking these achievements, but it's nice to accomplish. To be honest, I had a lot of fun playing these minigames, and with Tenzin's antics, I spent way more time than I should have on these games. Speaking of Tenzin, I absolutely hate using him in my Islamon fights. That's right, Summer Pockets has its own Pokemon battling system. How it works is very simple. You catch Islamon using bait that you place every night and use them to challenge other people on the island and fight their Islamon. These Islamon ranges from local animals on the island, like eels, to butterflies, to even Tenzin himself. I can't remember how many times I've had Tenzin almost kill himself in these fights. While I want to say that these fights have some sort of strategy, it's very much RNG based in the wildest sense of the form, where you bring your best and hope to god that you win in type advantage. If not, just try again using your raunchy adult magazines to attract high-level Islamon to claim superior dominance over the islanders, and especially children. And then you wonder why you spent the entire summer vacation playing a dumb game, and enjoyed it. Before we get to the main heroines, let's talk a little about the side characters. I really like this cast. They're all strange in their own little way, but fun. Umi is a very good girl, an absolutely precious child. I had a fun time seeing her interactions with Hyrie. She's a kid acting like a responsible adult, but she still contains those childish behaviors befitting her age. Not in the same way as a bratty child, but as a competent person. I had the most laughs with Hyrie just talking with her. Overall, Ki is just very good at writing kid characters. Meanwhile, Kyoko was a small disappointment. She feels like a convenient plot excuse for Hyrie to just do whatever, honestly. She's just there because the setting requires her to be there as the resident parent. It feels like a missed opportunity. Miki is just hilarious in her own right as the serious and upright person in the group, and having her play the straight man in regards to the rest of the cast is fun, especially with her signature water gun. At least in the re-release of the game Summer Pockets Reflection Blue, Miki gets a route along with Umi, Shizuku, and a brand new heroine Shiki. One of the great things about the new release was the addition of new everyday life scenarios, which in my opinion is the best move to make because Ki makes some excellent slice of life content. In the new release, you can play table tennis with the heroines, which is something I never knew I wanted. So let's begin on the routes. The way to choose the heroine routes is pretty simple. After the prologue, all you have to do is choose the girl that you want multiple times. In terms of route progression, I went with Shiroha, Ao, Kamome, Sumugi, and then the final true route. Shiroha felt the most relaxed and most ordinary, a route that didn't leave me a blubbering broken man. Interestingly enough, it didn't feel like a pure romance story as it was a journey of two people trying to overcome their internal difficulties together. Shiroha acts very antisocial, distant, and quiet, especially after that introduction. But over time, she starts warming up to us as we spend more time with her, making for some great flustered expressions, but remaining natural as we see through their conversations. Shirha's route doesn't push for romantic implications, but rather it focuses on her self-development. 
To which I actually liked the natural progression between her and Hyrie, and I thought it was better this way than forcing the romance in her route, when personally, Shiraha's internal issues were way more compelling. The most surprising thing was that the route also becomes a journey of self-reflection for Hyrie, allowing us to understand his backstory, his troubles, and why he came to the island in the first place. The other routes briefly reference his backstory, but in Shiroha's route, I feel it more relates with her circumstances, which is why I would recommend choosing Shiroha for the first route. That said, you don't have to go with her, you can choose whoever you want to, but I feel like in terms of overall progression and consistency, this makes sense. Ao is the rowdiest one of our group of heroines and can be often found sleeping, to which Hyrie messes around with a lot to a humorous extent. While she's the most eccentric and the most entertaining one out of the heroines, with her mind always in the gutter, her route is still emotionally impactful. All of her particular quirks have relevant meaning as they relate to her story. It's powerful in that her story beats are placed in a way that builds up tension throughout her route, and while predictable to figure out where the story will go, it's the gratifying way that the story proceeds to tell it that makes it heartfelt and passionate. If Ao's route was a constant climb of emotions, Kamame's route leads you on and then hits you like a truck. Anyway, the perfect word to describe Kamame's route is just adventure. Her route is certainly a fun one as Kamame brings Hyrie along with her whims in order to accomplish her goal, even in the common route as we embark on what is basically an RPG fetch quest. What I also like about her route is that because of the way that we go through the story and understand its foundation, I definitely felt that I was along for the ride alongside Kamame and Hyrie. It's the experiences that we made along the way that made her route the most impressionable in my eyes. That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. So it would seem. Anyway, Samuki is the longest build up to a sad moment I've seen in a while, and if you've been deeply invested into her, the ending will most likely tear you apart. It's a long drawn out story about giving meaning to experiences that you make knowing it will all end at some point. It's the memories that you make during that time that will stay with you forever. But, I'm sorry guys, I just could not get invested into her route. Her route dragged on with a bunch of slice of life scenarios that felt longer than it needed to be, and given Sumugi and Shizuku's behaviors, the mood was just flat a majority of the time. Speaking of behaviors, a big criticism I have with her route was often because of Shizuku, because of... It's hard to focus on Sumugi's route when the course of the conversation either goes into Mugi, Mugi. or The conversations just don't feel natural and personally, jokes that rely on a vocal stick or a singular concept doesn't stick the landing for me. But if you like Sumugi, then all the power to you. In regards to that last route, oh boy. The route begins very wholesomely and Ki just does what Ki does best, easing you into slice of life moments, slowly inching you towards the inevitable truth building layer upon layer of revealing details until our main character is forced into a tough decision, to which our character moves forward because of love. Let's move to the production notes of Summer Pockets. Overall, it's been fantastic. Many of the backgrounds are bright, vibrant with color, echoing the lived-in nature of a rural island life. Most scenes are often established through slow pans of the sky which set the tone of the scenario. Meanwhile, special sequences in the story have accompanying visual and text effects that add flair to the scene and it's a nice extra touch. The special CGs that come into play during those final moments during each route really just serve to punch you in the guts where it really hurts, using low angle shots to capture the whole scene or hide facial expressions. I'm not sad. I'm not sad at all. Music has always been one of the strong points of Key's visual novels, and often this can be attributed to Jun Maeda's great strength as a composer. With Jun Maeda being Summer Pockets' original creator, the music is pleasant to listen to at its slice of life bits and strongest at its emotional peaks. The background music is pretty varied in composition by composers Don Maru, Roy Mizuzuki, and Jun Maeda himself, just to name a couple, all of which have worked on previous Key titles. The best songs in the soundtrack in my opinion are the soft melodic piano pieces that play throughout the quieter moments of the visual novel and the arrangements of the vocal song, like the opening and ending. Speaking of openings and endings, Summer Pockets brought out some heavy hitters for the singers, bringing to the table Konomi Suzuki singing the opening and ending for Summer Pockets, and Yurika handling one of the insert songs. Other vocal songs are also voiced by their respective character voice actors. Characters are all unique and simply designed from one another from Shiroha's modest white school uniform look to Kaname's highly contrasting dark black outfit, which helps stand out from the backgrounds. 
Now, this may be an isolated incident, but I will call out the initial release of Summer Pockets because I often ran into lots of typos. Way more than the average visual novel with one, maybe two typos, but I can recall numerous times I ran into a typo and running into one broke my immersion. I also ran into issues with texture and font errors where the font just did not load for me or the font was just squished together. And this was after two reinstallations. This isn't a criticism of the actual story, but of the localized release of the visual novel. Summer Pockets is a journey of enjoying summer vacations. Even if it'll all end at some point, it teaches us to enjoy every moment of it. And even if it does end, there'll be more summer adventures to look forward to, endless possibilities full of excitement and enjoyment. And when we look back on those summers, there'll be wonderful memories to look back upon. While harped by repetitive character jokes and reliance on heightened emotions and magic, each route brings an exciting, mystifying, and emotional core, and the final route capitalizes on that, bringing a heavy-hearted conclusion to yet another great key visual novel. Solid recommendation. You can find Summer Pockets over on Steam. Subscribe if you want to see more content, check back every week for a new anime visual novel review. For more of my thoughts and the most up-to-date news on videos, you can find me on Twitter at The August Hale. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram for more announcements as well as additional content. Check out some of my other anime visual novel reviews on my channel playlist. Links are in the description down below. That's it for today for this video. Have a great day you all.